Petrobras is the oil giant of South America. It is the world leader when it comes to deep sea drilling and it is a way better investment than all of the western oil companies. First of all, what's important to know, yes, Petrobras is majority owned by the Brazilian government, while they only own 28% of all the shares. When it comes to the voting shares, they control over 50%. But that is not only a negative, that is also a positive, and many investors only look at the negatives of that really and don't really see the positives. First, let's look how Petrobras makes their money. The majority of their profits come from gas and diesel. They refine that themselves out of the oil they extract and they also import some oil in case they have some spare capacity. But they also make of course some money by exporting stuff like crude oil and fuel oil. You gotta remember most of the profits come from the domestic market. Of the 49 billion dollars in sales, 37 billion were made in Brazil. They also have some other stuff like electricity and renewables and especially here they're investing a lot of money but it is not a big segment of a business and this is not where the profits are gonna come from. It's also interesting to see where they sell that oil to. They don't really have a political allegiance. Sometimes they're selling to China, sometimes to Europe, sometimes to the USA. They really don't care who they send it to. For example, in the second quarter of 2022, when oil prices in Europe were sky high due to embargo on Russia, they sold a lot to Europe. Now they're selling more to Latin America, more to China. They just send it wherever the price is for highest right now. So that is nice to know. Brazil is not going to be really hit with sanctions and is also not going to join in on sanctions on a lot of countries because they're kind of in the middle of BRICS and the Western world. So they're always going to get a good price for oil and will always have someone to sell it to. Now, what are they using this huge amount of cash flows? They have 14 billion in the first half year of this year. They have been paying down a lot of debt. If we go on a longer term, they have been deleveraging since 2016. They had an enormous amount of debt. They have gotten it kind of under control now. Due to some one-time expenses, it has went up a bit, but it's still very much under control. They're not spending recklessly. Especially with 28 billion annualized free cash flow, 42 billion of net debt is not really that much. Even if oil prices go lower and their profit margin drops, that is still very much manageable. While other oil companies are completely going away from oil and gas, they're just investing in renewables. Some are even rebranding away from oil. Petrobras is very much still exploring. In fact, the Brazilian government has urged them to produce more oil. Unlike with companies in the West, in the UK, in the US, where the leaders are trying to cancel oil production, Biden, in fact, stopped a lot of drilling. In the UK, they have scaled back giving out drilling permits, for example. This is not happening in Brazil. This oil company is going to continue to increase production over time. No matter what you think about the environment, for the company itself, it is very beneficial. And yes, they also use this free cash flow, of course, for dividends. And a lot of people got into the stock because they paid a lot of dividends during the pandemic and beyond. But that is not going to continue like that. In fact, they announced that they trim the dividend to 45% of free cash flows. But in exchange, they will buy back shares. So instead of a huge dividend, you will have some share buybacks and some dividends, but still a very high dividend yield because the stock is trading at way lower multiples. So you can think, okay, first half of 2023. Oil prices were not that high, so this free cash flow was not extraordinarily high. Now with oil prices going up higher again, they will probably have higher profits again. Where will the profitability go? With most of our money coming from fuel prices, we gotta see how are fuel prices in Brazil behaving. They recently raised them, and not by a little, it was a great increase. And now we gotta think, this is a state company, has there been pushed back from the government? And they said no, the government did not care, they didn't object to it. So basically, they're allowing the company to increase oil prices. And it also makes sense. Inflation in Brazil is very low. And if they increase oil prices, that means more money for the government. And every government likes more taxes. And especially when they don't call it a direct tax because it's coming over the state oil company. So it's not a direct tax. So it's more popular. Of course, with all this government involvement, there are also some negative things. For example, usually the company gets shaken up every election. The board members get replaced. Not all is rosy with it. It is just, are you comfortable with having the Brazilian government as a majority shareholder? And historically, Petrobras cash flow has not been as volatile as other oil companies. And it has been on a to already stand upward because you know Brazil is still a growing market and they're still increasing production. So now we gotta think where is profitability gonna go? I would say the extraordinary oil prices of 2020 are not gonna come back. Annualized free cash flows of around 28 billion is very realistic especially this has been during lower oil prices and also before they hiked fuel prices. And with more investments in oil coming, increased production, I think 28 billion per year annualized is very realistic. Now, when we calculate the free cash flow per share, if you look on a lot of websites, it will be skewed. They will be telling you a free cash flow of like six per share right now. 
but that only happens if you deduct the preferred shares, which a lot of people do. They say, oh, only the common shares count to this, the preferred share don't. But that would basically mean you only account for half the shares. I'm gonna count the total share count as 13 billion, and you'll have free cash flow of 28 billion. That is around $2 per share with a bit of safety. Because remember, oil is volatile, we should have a margin of safety. I went with a 6% growth rate for the next five years, 4% afterwards. In that included is some fuel price increases, also some buybacks. They're not gonna make a lot of buybacks, but they're gonna buy back some shares, and also some increased production because they're still investing heavily in exploration. 10% discount rate, 12 times multiple, remember it is an oil company, plus it's state owned so it's always going to trade at a lower multiple, 45% dividend payout ratio with a deduction for taxes, gives me an intrinsic value of 2097, it's currently trading at 1405 so it's a 45% discount. Now this is a, I would say, conservative assumption, but not very conservative. If we say what happens if they fall back to 1.7 free cash flow per share and only go for 2%, well, then it's only worth 12.49. You wouldn't lose so much. Maybe you would get an 8% return instead of a 10% return. So I think that is still very worth it. And the upside is very great. Let's say all prices stay higher for longer. And that would give them a free cash flow per share of 2.5. They grow at 7% for the next 5 years and 5% afterwards. That would already give them an intrinsic value of 29.87 per share. So with the Brazilian government behind them telling them to drill and continuing to invest, while raising fuel prices, I think Petrobras is going to be a great investment. Of course, you just have to know, are you comfortable with having the Brazilian government as a majority holder? If you are, then I think this is a great investment. What do you think? Write it down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.